From December of 1941 through May of 1942, Japan successfully worked its way through the Pacific Ocean, basically taking contra control of areas um, that once belonged to the United States, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and also Australia. The Japanese commander-in-chief of the Pacific, Isoroku Yamamoto, was first hoping that either the United States or Great Britain would see that they were losing and they would negotiate and end the war in Japan's favor. But seeing that this wasn't going to happen, Yamamoto hoped to extend Japan's reach to encompass the islands of the Coral Sea, New Caledonia, Fiji, and Midway. So in May of 1942, there was the Battle of the Coral Sea. And this was uh, when aircraft carriers engaged each other in battle for the first time through the aircraft on the carriers. The Japanese technically came out victorious, but this battle was critical in that two important Japanese carriers were out of commission and unable to participate in the next battle, which was the Battle of Midway. Notice the Japanese line of advance in yellow and the island in the um the island of Midway in the middle, not too far west of Hawaii. The Battle of Midway happened there between June fourth through seventh in nineteen forty two. This was the Japanese plan to take over the island in order to trap and destroy the U.S. Pacific Fleet. They planned to send one fleet of ships towards the Aleutian Islands, which are up north by Alaska, as a diversion, and then they would invade Midway. If they were successful in doing so, they would essentially take out the U.S. Pacific Fleet for about a year, which would obviously be very detrimental to the U.S. advance in the Pacific. Fortunately, American codebreakers were able to figure out the Japanese plan, and they warned Admiral Chester Nimitz, who was commander over naval operations in the Pacific. So General MacArthur was in the Army, and he was in charge of the ground forces, and Nimitz was the admiral over the Navy. Um, but because of this information, Nimitz was able to hastily organize an offensive attack of his own, and he gathered the other U.S. aircraft carriers in the Pacific to surprise the Japanese. And there you see an example. This is the USS Yorktown, which the Japanese thought was not going to be able to come back into the battle, but its reparations were d done in time um, that it was back and ready for the Battle of Midway. So the U.S. were able to destroy four Japanese carriers, so they those same carriers that had actually been a part of the Pearl Harbor attack, whereas the United States only lost one of their aircraft carriers. The Japanese also lost over 100 trained pilots, and this loss halted the Japanese advances toward New Caledonia, Fiji, and Samoa, and because of this, the U.S. and Japanese were hereafter on equal footing as far as their naval strength was concerned. It was also important in stalling the Japanese offensive attack and resulted in the Allies making offensive gains as well. So this, along with the next Allied victory at Guadalcanal, are considered major turning points in the war in the Pacific. The U.S. plan was to island hop closer to Japan by seizing Japanese-controlled islands one at a time. One of the major battles took place in one of the Solomon Islands near Australia, known as, the Gua known as Guadalcanal. You'll see it here in this map, just east of the Battle of the Coral Sea. This battle took place in August through February in 1942 and 1943. From this battle, the U.S. learned that the Japanese were really willing to fight to the very end. The U.S. was convinced of Japanese determination when the Japanese continuously tried to recapture and retake Henderson Airfield. So eventually, the U.S.-led troops were able to secure the island, and then they built additional runways in yet another airfield, and then they used this area as a stopping point for attacks deeper into the Pacific.